Well, welcome back. We're going to talk about bronchiectasis. Uh, we mentioned this with the patients who have CF, so now we're going to talk a little bit about these guys. Um, basically, bronchiectasis is a lot of things that occur, airway epithelial and ciliary dysfunction, mucus hypersecretion, chronic infections. And I'll tell you what, these infections are what causes a lot of the bronchiectasis, so we run into problems with that. Um, we also see inflammation. It results in permanent airway injury and dilation, and then bronchiatic airways that are poor in airway clearance. And basically, as a result of that, everything seems to get worse, okay? And some people call this the vicious cycle, because all this seems to do is go round and round and round, unfortunately, and we see a lot of problems with it. It's an acquired disorder, okay? Uh, characterized by chronic dilation and distortion of one or more bronchi. And so you can see it's a little bit high there. And as a result of extensive inflammation, destruction of the uh, bronchial walls, you can either have it in one lung or both lungs. And the smaller bronchi with less supporting cartilage are really the ones that are affected. Basically, if you remember, the further out you get, the less support there is, easier it is to destroy the, t the lungs in that particular point. There's three forms, and you'll see these, the varicose ones, the cylindr cylindrical ones, and cystic bronchiectasis too. And you can see this shows you a picture of the normal one, nice and smooth at that point, cylindrical, a little bit larger in some of the areas. Varicose looks like varicose veins if you've ever seen them. And then cystic, as you can see, there are lots of airways, uh, grape like clusters with those. And if you look here, these are x rays that show you A is your tubular, B is your varicose, and then C is the cystic at this particular point. So the changes, the major pathological or structural changes are. Again, this chronic dilation, distortion, excessive foul smelling sputum, okay, and along with bronchospasm, hyperinflation, there's your ear trapping. That's why this is an obstructive disease. Unfortunately, it also leads to atelectasis. Uh, atelectasis, we've talked a little bit about it in asthma and the CF, and now we're seeing it with the bronchiectasis. And then you're going to see consolidation and fibrosis in the outer airways, and then hemoptysis secondary to arterial erosion. And basically, most all the causes are bronchial obstruction and infection. In developed countries, CF is the common cause of bronchiectasis in children. And the prevalence of non-cystic fibrosis bronchiectasis is very low. If you look at it, only 4.2 per 100,000 young adults in the United States. And this is because we have better access to health care and we're able to take care of these infections much, much better. So causes that are commonly classified acquired congenital, not good deal, immunodeficiency, abnormal secretion. And then if you notice alpha-1 antitrypsin is in this one, and that is one of the causes of emphysema. So when we talk about these obstructive diseases and you think about them, they're not separate little diseases along a continuum. There's overlap with them. And when we're talking about, you know, what's wrong with this patient, you need to look and see what other things could there be as a result of what we're seeing with this patient, okay? So it's not just, a, oh, you have bronchiectasis, okay, but what else do you have? Let's take a look at that and figure out what's going on. Diagnosis, we can see your routine chest x-ray. It's going to show us um, the overinflated lungs or the loss of the lung uh, at that particular point, increased opacities, uh, fluid-filled airways, the crowding of the bronchi, especially if you're overinflated, and there's your atelectasis, okay? And you can get your high-resolution computerized 
computer tomography. It's better at finding all of this good stuff than a standard CT. And then spirometry testing, we're looking for what we normally see with patients who have obstructive diseases. And so this is just chronic sus clinical sus suspicion of bronchiectasis, and these have been com uh, confirmed by HRCT. And you can see the localized bronchiectasis. This is a post-infectious TV uh, patient. Um, this is another one that has different things with them. And then here's your cystic fibrosis along with it too. Don't those x-rays look really interesting? So cardiopulmonary clinical manifestations, excessive bronchial secretions, 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 secretions. Everything we've talked about has had secretions, bronchospasm, consolidation, and you're going to have that increased AC membrane. You're not going to be having that gas exchange that we need to be having in the timely manner. Clinical data, we can take and see what's going on with this. Do you have obstructive? Do you have restrictive? You know, is it both at this particular point? just depending on what's going on. So we need to know how many secretions you have. We can look and see how much destruction has actually taken place. And then we can see that fibrosis and that electasis that's associated with it also to tell us whether where you are on this continuum of obstructive and restrictive. Vital signs, you've only seen these once or twice before, I'm sure. Increased respiratory rate, increased heart rate, increased blood pressure. There's your accessory muscles. Remember, expiration should always be passive unless you're doing a PFT or for some reason having to exhale. We see that if you've been out there running a marathon. Uh, there's a lot of exhalation that's non-passive, but that's for a particular reason. And we can also see personal breathing. Um, there's your barrel chest. If you're obstructive, cyanosis, digital clubbing. Remember, digital clubbing comes from hypoxia. Um, these guys with that increased AC membrane are going to be hypoxic because they can't get the gas to go across the membrane in the short amount of time you have for diffusion to take place. Peripheral edema, venous distension, uh, increased JVD, pitting edema, you know, there's the four categories of it. It depends on, you know, how long it takes it to recover as to what category you're in. And an enlarged and tender liver because everything has to go through the liver. So what are we also going to see? Cough, sputum, hemoptysis. Foul smelling, foul smelling, guys. If you look on here, foul smelling sputum, hallmark of bronchiectasis. Hallmark of bronchiectasis means if you smell that, if it's not an abscess, then we're looking at bronchiectasis, okay? Decreased tactile uh, vocal fremitus if you're obstructed. Hyperresident, there's your diminished breath sounds, wheezes, crackles, everything that goes with obstruction. Restriction, of course, we have a lot of consolidation in those areas. There's the atelectasis. Now you have that increased tactile vocal fremitus, bronchial breast sounds. Remember when we talked about the patients with CF, over areas of consolidation, over areas of atelectasis, we have that bronchial breast sounds, crackles, voice sounds, and dull percussion note. Remember, consolidation, is dullness, okay? Here's your different EFTs. You've seen these before. ABGs, same thing. Abnormal lab test procedures. If you're hypoxic, what happens to your hemoglobin hematocrit levels? Remember, in order to transport oxygen, you got to have something to carry it around. If I'm not able to get enough oxygen or what I have, 
Perhaps a few more red blood cells might help. We might be able to get it across and on those. The problem is if we see polycythemia, remember polycythemia is very unhealthy. It causes clumping, it can cause clotting, and it puts a person in a very high risk of having a stroke or something else that's gonna go with it. Because there's infections, remember these are caused by infections. You've got an increase in your white blood count, okay means that you have an infection has to be treated sputum look at all that good stuff strep homoptysis pseudomonas anaerobic uh, organisms there's your abscesses okay you got a combination of everything at this particular point when we look at your chest x-ray when it's obstructive there we see everything's black flat diaphragms. You can also see that long narrow heart. Remember with a patient who has COPD, especially with emphysema portion of it, the long narrow heart, we can hear those heart sounds in the epigastric region. An enlarged heart if they have core pulmonale and then a lot of consolidation at lectuses and tram tracts. If it's restrictive, beautiful white okay why do i say that is because the more white the less gas is being exchanged it is not a good thing okay so we may or may not know what's going on we may or may not be able to treat it um we need to be able to do the best we can we got to get a hold of the infections. We have to help with the secretions, obstructions, prevent complications. Look at all this good stuff. Antibiotics, bronchodilators, expectorants, chest physiotherapy, vaccinations. What's missing here? Patient cooperation, family cooperation. You can tell people you need to do this. This is what you need to do. But unless you get cooperation and buy-in, from the patient and or the family, things aren't gonna work. So some of the things, oxygen therapy, airway clearance, lung expansion, aerosolized medication, mechanical vent if we need to, bronchiectasis, you wanna stay away from it if you can.